Welcome to another simple engineering snippet. In this instructional video, we will be applying Reynolds Transport Theorem to a transient conservation of mass problem. I hope you find it useful. Okay, so we have a rigid tank that has an uh, inflow of water and an outflow of oil as shown. The air is either being compressed or expanding, so we will be looking for the mass flow rate of air and determine whether it's an inflow or an outflow. All fluids are incompressible and remain at constant temperature. Uh, with that, the air in the tank is at a constant density, and the density is provided. And the density of the oil and water are provided uh, with the uh, specific gravities. So we'll we have to calculate the density of the oil and density of the water using the specific gravity. Before we move on, the opening in the top of the tank is 5 centimeters. All right, so Reynolds Transport Theorem, Conservation of Mass. Here's the equation. Not going to go into detail, but the left-hand side says that the... Uh, uh, mass is conserved, and the first term on the right-hand side is the time rate change of mass inside the control volume, and the second integral on the right-hand side is the net outflow of mass from the control volume. Okay, so we're looking for whether the mass flow rate of air is going into or out to, and we want to calculate that value. So let's uh, select the air as our control volume and apply Reynolds Transport Theorem. And just as a first cut, let's uh, assume that the uh, mass flow rate of air is actually leaving the tank. That may not be correct, and I'll probably repeat this several times. If we return a negative value, that means the air is uh, entering the tank. Okay, so let's apply Reynolds Transport Theorem to the air. Notice the symbol I'm using for volume to distinguish it from velocity. And let's solve for the time rate change of mass of the air in the control volume. And it's constant density, so these integrals are pretty simple. And we are assuming that the air is leaving the tank. And so the, carrying through some uh, simplification, uh, we get that the density times the time rate change of volume of the air is equal to minus the mass flow rate of air out of the tank. And so let's stop for a second to see if this physically makes sense. If the uh, time rate change of the volume of the air is negative, a negative times a negative is a positive, and that means that a positive mass flow rate out, so we, that would mean that we assume the correct direction. If the time rate change of volume of the air is positive, a positive times a negative is overall is a negative, and we get a negative answer, that means the air is actually entering the tank. Let's call this equation one. We'll be using it uh, a little bit later. Okay, so we need to find the, uh, the time rate change of volume of the air in the tank. So let's, we're going to need to apply Reynolds Transport Theorem again, and what should be our control volume? Well, we can try selecting both the oil and the water as our control volume, as shown. And Reynolds Transport Theorem, well, the first term on the right-hand side, that's a bit problematic. Why is that? Well, what is the density in that control volume? We're trying to simplify this equation. That's going to be a hard thing to pull off. Uh, there's an easier way to do this. And so what we're going to make use of, the fact is that the tank is rigid, and the tank consists of three volumes of fluid, water, oil, and air. Since the tank is rigid, the uh, time rate change of the volume of the overall tank is equal to zero. And again, the uh, volume of the tank is uh, the three fluids is equal to the sum of the three fluids in the tank. And so we take the uh, derivative and set it equal to zero as shown. Now I can solve this for our unknown that we're looking for, the time rate change of volume of the air, as so. And now we're going to apply Reynolds Transport Theorem separately to the water and then again to the oil. So starting with the water, Reynolds Transport Theorem. And uh, note that the uh, water is an inflow, so the uh, dot product returns a negative sign. And making use of that, and doing a little bit of algebra and rearranging, we get these equations, and we get the time rate change, change of the volume of the water is equal to the mass flow of the water into the tank, divided by the density of the water. And that is going to return a positive value for the time rate change of volume of the water, which as we expect, the uh, mass and the volume of the water is increasing. All right, so we have one. Now let's work on the uh, volume, time rate change of volume of the oil, making the oil our control volume, going through the same steps. And this time, the dot product, since the oil is an outflow, is going to return a positive sign. And I can solve for the time rate change of the volume of the oil and obtain this equation. And that's pretty good. 
So now our top equation, we can simplify using the uh, parameters we just determined and getting rid of the negative sign, retain this equation for the time rate change of volume of air. Now let's call recall equation number one. So now we have an expression for the time rate change for the volume of the air, and we can make use of that. And so equation one now becomes the mass flow rate of the air out is equal to the density of the air times the quantity mass flow rate of water divided by the density of the water minus mass flow rate of oil divided by the density of the oil. Now we know almost everything, but we haven't actually calculated the densities for the water and the oil. Let's go ahead and do that using specific gravity. What is specific gravity? Well, it is the density divided by reference density, and reference density is uh, based upon water, 998.2 kilograms per cubic meter. And so for the oil, since specific gravity is 0.7, we're going to multiply that by 0.7 and obtain the density of the oil. Uh, specific gravity of the water is 1, so its density is just a, the reference density. And so now we have everything we need. We can plug in the... Uh, the numbers and the units and since we're using the SI system everything comes out nice and clean and we get an answer that the mass flow rate of the out of the air is negative 0.00245 kilograms per second and as I said before uh, since it's a negative answer this is actually an inflow not an outflow all right so that is our uh, final answer let's look to see if the uh, flow of the air can be reasonably assumed to be uh, incompressible. Well, the first thing let's do is calculate the uh, velocity of the air. And we have everything that we need. And so doing that, we get the velocity of the air is equal to uh, 1.02 meters per second. Does that mean it's compressible or incompressible? Well, how do we determine that? As well, we look at the Mach number. Let's calculate the Mach number. And rule of thumb is if the Mach number is less than 0.3, uh, we can treat it as incompressible. And well, what is the uh, speed of sound? Uh, it's around 330 meters per second. And so calculating the Mach number, we see that it's a quite low value of uh, 0.003. And so yeah, uh, incompressible flow is uh, very reasonable for this situation. All right, well, that wraps up this uh, problem. I hope you found it useful. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe and have a great day.